Hello, my name is Martin Walsh, and we are trying this video again. So, we are Module 4, discussing our uh, case study of the 54-year-old woman who was found wandering in a park. Um, and then she began screaming obscenities, became very, uh, you know, confused, combative, disoriented. And um, then she fell, injured herself, and... That's when, you know, the EMS team showed up. And when they were treating her, she started shouting at the doctors and nurses that they, she needed a bottle. And she was very disheveled, smelled, you could smell still, body odor, urine. And so, question number one. My first, uh, my first reaction to what, you know, her issue is, uh, you know, severe drug or alcohol, you know, withdrawal syndromes you know or you know being that she's shaking and and you know clumsy it could be that she's you know she's coming down off of uh, alcohol giving her like the delineated tremors and she could also be abusing drugs causing her to be disoriented and, and both of those can alter your, your your brain's functionality and lead to a uh, how, how do I say this a confused state um, the other next one, uh, next t topic, I should say, is uh, hypoglycemia or your, or your low blood sugar. And according to the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive uh, and Kidney Diseases, um, hypoglycemia symptoms in the mild to moderate range also they include shaky or jittery, uh, blurred vision, dizzy, lightheaded, confused, disoriented. Um, weak, which could contribute to her falling, irritable or nervousness, argumentative or combative. Um, basically, every single symptom, it, it can almost, you know, completely mimic that of a, a drunk driver. Um, so that's, that's something, you know, something that could have uh, caused that. And then my other, other uh, idea was schizophrenia complicated by substance abuse. Um, so according to the National Institute of Mental Health, uh, schizophrenia has psych uh, psychotic symptoms uh, such as hallucinations, delusions, uh, paranoia, um, thought disorder, so unusual um, thinking or disorganized speech, which is basically, you know, she, when she was yelling at the jogger and yelling at EMS and doctors, she was not making any sense whatsoever. So, and then, uh, you know, the, the stale odor and urine and and you know I think I think across the board alcohol probably played a factor in there somewhere but uh, uh this one could have also had schizophrenia in there and number two sorry I'm just running through this so uh short and long term risk uh health risks uh short term risk uh obviously uh, the stale odor of urine and stuff that I means she's just going right on herself so you have uh hygienic problems uh so you have you know Run the risk of UTIs, uh, bacterial skin infections like cellulitis. Um, let's see, starvation or anorexia due to inadequate access to uh, proper food. Um, you know, if she has mental issues, then she won't. You know, she might not be able to feed herself appropriately. If she has substance abuse issues, then um, she might be foregoing food in favor of drugs or alcohol. And you know, some some drugs take away that appetite and that could also be why you know how, how she got hypoglycemic if she's using drugs and has completely removed any sources of uh, nutrients from her life then you know your body just uses it up um long term uh if blood sugar levels become too low uh you can have um Fast or irregular heartbeat, fatigue, shakiness, anxiety, sweating, uh, irritability, um, as hypoglycemia worsens, confusion, abnormal behavior, but, but like like I said earlier, um, seizures and lost consciousness. Um, Long-term risks for uh, drugs and alcohol abuse are, or well, su you know, substance abuse or drug abuse uh, on, a, on a chronic scale, not just like a one-off or uh, delirium, depression, anxiety, death. Uh, let's see, why do you think the patient's hands are shaking? What do you think causes their confusion or combativeness? Um, yeah, I pretty much explained this in the first one. Uh, the 
the shaking of hands could be withdrawal symptoms from alcohol. They could be, um, uh, you know, decreased blood glucose. So, you know, the, the hypoglycemic factor could, could play uh, the, the shakiness. Um, and then, yeah, same, same way with the, the schizophrenia. Um, Sorry. Uh, yeah, the uh, the schizophrenia. I, I, I assumed was going to be complicated with alcohol. So yeah, any any kind of withdrawal or come down from those, definitely. Um, let's see. Uh, what assessment do you think are needed for this patient? Okay, first assessment: mental health. Um, uh, also, well, we'll put in the order for mental health, uh, but we're also going to have genetic uh, general physical examination. Make sure there's no cuts, abrasions, uh, infections on 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 the body. And make sure she's all right in physical health. We're gonna run our labs, so CBC, uh, so that way we check for any internal infections. Uh, CMP, like the Chem Twenty, uh, check sugar levels, liver and renal functionality, check insulin production in the pancreas. Uh, toxicology screen for uh, drug and alcohol usage, both past and current. Um, okay, so on to our research question: Mental illness management includes pharmaco pharmacological. Um, When it comes to uh, mental health issues, there are a number of treatments, both therapeutic and uh, pharmacological. Um, and usually, this is uh, not not something that's done just in one or the other. It usually, is much more effective being a teamwork. So, um, in my last video, I equated it to uh, building a house. You need a firm foundation in order to build a, a, a long-lasting house. Um, so, like, the medication will be able to give you a uh, firm foundation, and then the, th uh, the, the psychotherapy will be able to give you the, that, that beautiful, long-lasting house to build on top of it. But if you try to completely fix a mental health issue without having both those components, how it's going to fall over. So, uh, for me, um, I am just pulling out of the, the drug guide. Uh, I'll show you some of the... Uh, a couple of medications I was on for uh, PTSD and I'm still on and they've changed my life um, so first one's Prazosin right here in the drug guide it's an anti-hypertensive and then the other one is uh, Trazodone which is right here which is uh, an antidepressant and now there, there's two uses for this like the uh, the antidepressant is in, in a much higher dosage um, whereas I use it for, you know, uh, insomnia, you know, but that's really part of my PTSD is that I just can't sleep ever. So, um, but this allows me to get that long, restful, good night's sleep. So that way in the morning, I'm ready to combat the day. Whereas without it, I stay up all night long worrying and then worrying. So then I wake up, I'm frazzled. I did not get a good restful sleep. You know, my body's already run down and then I'm confronted with stressors of the day. Uh, there's just no way I'll be able to handle it. So having a good uh, pharmacology regimen will allow you to uh, improve every single day. Um, and then one of the, the, the greatest things that helped me was more the psychotherapy side, you know, getting a great night's sleep, you know, was, was, it was amazing. But for me, the best way to deal with my issues was talking with other guys that were over there. Um, especially guys that actually saw combat, because there's not very many people that, you know, shot their weapon or was out on patrol or, you know, did actual combat operations. It's very rare, you know. I mean, when you look at the Army as a whole. So being able to actually swap stories and, you know, go back and relive these events, and it, it kind of helps lessen it, you know. Uh, I blacked out a lot of it. And as I talk, I, I, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this now. I remember this now. And, it, and just that talking really helps ease it out. Um, let me touch on insurance real fast. Um, this is, man okay, so it's managed through your primary or your, your mental health provider. But the support of insurance is paramount. And I will touch on the, uh, I will reference my uh, fact sheet for the uh, Mental Health uh, Parity and Addiction Equity Act. And that was, uh, that was set back in 2006, or 8, correction, 2008. And it went into effect in 2009. And 
it guaranteed that any but any vent or any insurance provider that uh, was able to touch, you know provide insurance to patients had to give equal coverage for mental health uh, treatment as they do for surgical or outpatient procedures. Um, so it wouldn't be able to say, well, we completely cover outpatient, but we're only gonna pay 2% of mental health. It had to be equal. And then if you go to the, uh, in my conceptual foundations book, it highlights um, even more steps, an even greater length that uh, the, the uh, yeah, what was colloquially known as Obamacare, which is the oh, uh, Affordable Care Act, that has expanded the, the Mental Health Parity Act even even more so. And nowadays, I think our insurance companies are doing a downright great job because um, even before in in, in the original. The original act, uh, the original Parity Act of 1996, it did not even classify substance abuse disorders. Now, substance abuse is treated the exact same way as, you know, bipolar depression or, you know, schizophrenia. It is a full-on mental health issue, and it is treated as such. All right, sorry it went long, but I couldn't stop talking. So, thank you. Bye.